All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the derivatives of logarithms and exponentials. We actually know the derivative of one of the exponentials, the natural exponential, e to the x, right? We know the derivative of e to the x equals e to the x. We're gonna tackle the other exponentials, base, any number, and logarithms in general. Before we get into the fun of the calculus, let's just back up and remind ourselves about logarithms, the relationship to ex exponentials, and a few basic properties of logarithms. All right. In the base definition, logarithms and exponentials are simply the inverses of each other. If we have the logarithm base b of x, and that equals a y value, then the exact same statement, but in exponential form, would be b to the y equals x. Important to this conversation specifically, we're going to be looking first at the natural log. If we have the natural log of x, the natural log is the logarithm base e, and so this statement right here in exponential form would be e to the y equals x. And just to remind you a bunch of other useful logarithmic properties, we have, if we have the log base b of b to the r, well, I call this the alternative definition of a logarithm, this is just r. Uh, notice that these bases have to be the, be the same. This is actually the property of inverse functions. Um, another similar but, but importantly different um, property is that if we have the log base b of a different base, so this is not the same base as this. Well, it can be, but you wouldn't use this version of this, this uh, property. You'd use the above one. In this case right here, we can bring these exponents that are inside the logarithm and multiply them out front. So this is r times log base b of v. Then we have two other important properties that you're going to find very useful when applying differentiation to logarithmic um, expressions or functions. We have the log of any base, and if we have the multiplying of two values inside this logarithm, we can split this logarithm into two using addition. A very similar but different property is if we are dividing those things inside the logarithm here, we get exactly the same thing, except we are subtracting these logarithms from each other. I'm not gonna spend any time talking in detail about why these are true, though just know that these are exactly the same as similar exponent rules that we know very well. And last to say, why I'm giving you these is because when you're working with logarithms, it might be easier to use some of these properties to simplify your expression before you differentiate. Right in our first example, what I wanna show you is the derivative of the natural log of x. This is the only derivative that I'm actually gonna prove to you today. The rest I'll give, the other proofs are very, very similar. So we don't know the derivative of the natural log of x, but we just talked about, we do know that if y equals the natural log of x, then the equivalently true statement in exponential form would be that e to the y equals x. So what we're going to do is actually differentiate this equation right here. The y prime or the dy dx that we get is the derivative of the natural log function. All right, so here then, I'm differentiating both sides of this version of the expression. In this case right now, here, what we do is we differentiate the e to the y with respect to the y. In that case, we get e to the y. And then the chain rule says we then need to differentiate the inside function, which is just y, and this gives us dy dx. On the other side of this equation, obviously the derivative with respect to x of x is simply one. And so in this case right here, if I divide e to the y to both sides, what I will get here is that dy dx equals one over e to the y. Though you know that when we write these derivatives, it's really awkward to write the derivative with respect to x in terms of y. What we want to look for is an equivalent expression to e to the y. Do some tricks if we can to resub it in so we have our derivative with respect to x in terms of x. And in this case, it's actually pretty easy. If we look up and see an equivalent expression for e to the y, well, that was this in this first definition right here. e to the y is equal to x. And so, in fact, this derivative is equal to 1 over x. So again, what we just found there, given y equals the natural log of x, dy dx, or the derivative of the natural log of x, is simply 1 over x. So in our first rule here, we have the derivative of the natural log function 
equals one over x. Just to make a quick point, real quick, is that this is only true if x is greater than zero. That should be obvious because the domain of the natural log are only for positive numbers. The second important derivative we have given in this section will be the derivative of the general exponential base b. When we differentiate this, we get something very similar to e to the x. We get this b to the x out, but there's actually also this factor of the natural log of b. Important to say is that b in this case is a, is a number, right? It's a number like five, it's a constant. And so in this case right here, the natural log of five, it, it's not a variable, it would be a constant, probably a gnarly gross decimal constant, but this is just a constant times b to the x. Finally, the general logarithm derivative. Again, this is very similar, actually a combination of these two right here. If you take the general logarithm base b, take the derivative, it looks like this, but we also have this little extra factor. It is one over x times the natural log of b. Again, the proof of this comes from this stuff right here. These other two can be proven in fairly similar ways in using properties of exponentials and logarithms. If you're interested, look in your textbook or other online resources for those proofs. In this case, we're given that the f of x equals x times the natural log of x minus x, and we're being asked to find the first derivative. By the way, when you get into a second calculus class, you'll find that this is a very important property we're about to find right here. All right, and now to find the derivative of f of x, uh, we need to use the product rule on this first term right here because it's x times the natural log of x, two factors that vary in terms of x. So we'll take the derivative of the first here, that's x is, the derivative of x is one times the second factor plus the derivative of the second factor, which is one over x, as we previously stated, right? One over x is the derivative of the natural log times x right here. Finally, we're going to take the derivative of this last term, which is just a 1. I know I did that pretty quickly. I just want to highlight that this is the product rule for this term right here. In each of these first factors is me actually taking the derivative of the first factor then the second factor, respectively. All right, now all we need to do is clean this up a little bit. We got 1 times the natural log of x, which is simply the natural log of x. 1 over x times x, well, that's just 1. And then we still have this minus one. You'll notice that the plus one and minus one cancel out, leaving us with the natural log of x. This is some kind of weird inception problem or some upside down, but the general thing is this, is that the derivative of this expression right here ends up just being the natural log. All right, in our third and final example in this video, we're gonna tackle the derivative of the natural log of sine squared of x. This is a really important example because now we're going to see the chain rule being involved with the natural log. I'm actually not going to rewrite it this time, but it's really important to remember that when we're looking at this statement right here, this is sine of x squared. So when I'm doing the chain rule from outer function to the inner function, it will look like this. The very outer function is obviously the natural log here. The next outer function is the squaring. The final and the inner function will be the sine of x. All right, to find y prime, what I'm going to do is differentiate both sides of my equation with respect to x. Uh, the derivative with respect to x of y is simply y prime, what I'm looking for here. All right, over here, now what I have is the chain rule in progress. So the outer function is the natural log. The natural log gives me 1 over x as a derivative. With respect to this inside stuff, the inside function, again, is this sine squared of x. So I don't get one over x in this step. What I get is one over sine squared of x. Again, right, so I'm differentiating the natural log with respect to that sine squared of x. But now I need to multiply by the derivative of that inside stuff. So I need to differentiate sine squared of x. And the fun of this one is that this is still a chain rule, right? The outer function is the squaring. So I'm going to take care of the power rule around the sine of x. That gives me two sine of x to the one power, but I don't need to write that. But I do need to use the chain rule and differentiate the inner function, which is sine of x. 
And we know the derivative of sine of x is simply the cosine of x. Before I simplify everything, I want to just walk through this again and to look into this. This will feel a bit different. This is a lot like e to the x was fun until we got to the chain rule, then it started to feel weird. The natural log is very similar. The issue is when we take the derivative of natural log, we don't get some kind of logarithmic thing. We just get this one over x. So this first step right here again, we're differentiating the outer function natural log with respect to sine squared of x. When we do that, we get one over not x, we get one over sine squared of x, and then we take one over whatever we just have right there with a multiply by the derivative of that inner function we took the derivative with respect to. When we differentiate this, we've seen stuff like at this point a few times. I'm gonna use the power rule around the sine of x, bringing the two down, making this an exponent of one, but we don't need to write it. Now differentiating the inner function of sine to get cosine right here. Finally, just because we can, we can simplify this a bit more. Um, what I'm going to do is cancel uh, this factor of sine of x with one of these factors of sine of x. Um, and then I'm going to rewrite this as 2 times the cosine of x all over the sine of x. Here's my rewritten expression, 2 times cosine over sine. Um, I obviously could have wrote this factor of, of uh, 2 up in the numerator, but because I didn't do that, because I wanted to show you this, cosine over sine is cotangent. And so the easiest way to write this is 2 times the cotangent of x. Again, the most difficult step is probably this first one in getting used to this. This will feel very new, but you're gonna see once you do a few of these natural log problems, especially the ones that have complicated functions inside of the natural logarithm, this will become more comfortable as you move forward.